When you break your leg, you go to the doctor. When you experience depression, you go to the psychiatrist or psychologist, maybe. And when you're having an existential crisis, you might even consult a spiritual leader or life coach. Though we like to divide ourselves up into body, mind, and spirit, the truth is that human beings are complex wholes, and mental health is not different from physical health or even spiritual health. It's all just health in the end. It's obvious when you think about it. There is no mind without a brain, and your brain is as much a physical part of you as your legs or spleen or immune system. It doesn't matter how high-minded your ideals, how strong your will, how lofty your dreams. If your physical being is compromised, then you can never reach your highest cognitive or intellectual potential. Although it might seem counterintuitive, one of the best ways to boost not just mental health, but your brain's ability to do what it does best, think, is to take care of your entire organism, and that includes your physical body. Take care of your physical fitness, and your brain inevitably benefits, and vice versa. Build a strong, healthy brain, and it will in turn help you maintain your physical health. This might seem an obvious point to some, but for others, we're dedicated to all systems working hard, pushing the boundaries, and burning the midnight oil. This simply won't work because we're not steel and oil machines that can be pushed in that manner. In this chapter, we'll talk about just how to prepare the body so that the mind can follow. The way we can increase our neuro fitness actually has little to do with activities involving the brain. Rather, it's about actions that will benefit the brain as a side effect. You'll notice this theme throughout the book as well. It's a point that bears repeating. As we understand our physiology and neurology better and better, it becomes clear that the brain adapts up or down to our daily tasks and lifestyle, and not to supposed brain training programs that purport to increase your intelligence. So how can we make sure it's adapting in a way that we want? Get sweating. Physical fitness can often be defined by how active you are or how much exercise you engage in. And to be honest, that's not a bad metric to use. The vast majority of us could stand to exercise a little more than we currently are, even beyond the purposes of this book to boost our brain functioning. Of course, it's been shown that exercise assists with general cognitive functioning, including memory. But sometimes, when we talk about the benefits of exercise, it becomes difficult to separate what helps the brain versus what supports a healthy lifestyle in general. These elements are too intertwined to bother separating. But, for instance, the body reacts to exercise by improving insulin response, reducing inflammation, boosting flexibility, increasing bone density, and becoming more resistant to injury or illness. Additionally, exercise makes you happier through the release of endorphins. It increases your self-esteem and confidence, and it even reduces the symptoms of stress and anxiety. But you probably knew these benefits already. When you exercise, what exactly happens in the brain? 